Hey, what's going on guys? Threat Level Midnight here, and today we're talking about shotguns and specifically uh, how these guns pattern. Uh, and if you don't know what patterning is, it's just the, the way that uh, the pellets or shot spreads out of your gun when it impacts the target at different ranges. Uh, so this is a good way to get to know your shotgun a little bit better and to know how effective you can be at, uh, at what range. And a lot of this is going to depend on ammo type actually too. So uh, if you're in law enforcement, you probably know that everyone switched to uh, like a flight control wad and it keeps your shot pattern a lot tighter than uh, than traditional buckshot, the old like Winchester uh, Ranger stuff that I used to shoot. Um, and that's a huge benefit. So you're getting almost a slug like pattern from, you know, 15 yards and in it's very tight. Uh, and then when you stretch out a little bit, it keeps the shotgun effective at longer ranges. So today I want to show you uh, exactly how effective a gun can be. This is my Benelli M4 that I shoot at my three gun matches. Um, and it just has the standard, you know, cylinder choke in it. Uh, and, and I'll show you exactly how, how effective it can be. I want to show you guys the kind of ammo we're going to shoot today. I have a, a, few, a few different types here. Uh, and, then, and then one kind of boutique uh, kind of novelty item. So the first thing we're going to do is just uh, show a, uh, the federal law enforcement slug. It's a uh, low recoil, reduced recoil, uh, one ounce rifled slug. And then we're going to move on to a flight control nine pellet double out buckshot. Uh, this is also kind of law enforcement standard issue. And then from there, we're gonna test uh, some of this boutique stuff. I've had this laying around in my garage for a long time. Um, it's called multi-defense buckshot law enforcement uh, from Nobel Sport Italia. And basically there is, uh, it says there's six number one buckshot pellets, and then there's one like 65 caliber round ball. Uh, it looks like well created ammunition, but uh, I've always had my doubts about this kind of gimmicky stuff, but we're gonna put it to the test and see uh, if this fancy stuff with uh, the big 65 uh, caliber ball is more effective than a buckshot uh, and at what distance it, uh, it changes. All right guys, so if you're like me uh, and you have a red dot on your shotgun, you're probably zero with slugs. Uh, I zero with slugs and I zero them at 50 yards uh, traditionally for all my shotguns with red dots on it. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is we're at about 15 yards right here. I have a full size B27 target in the background uh, and I'm gonna show you just that the gun is zeroed uh, with a slug. We're just gonna shoot a headshot and then we're gonna shoot buckshot at the same distance and see if our pattern tracks the same way as the slug does because I've seen it several times where a slug might be dead on and your buckshot pattern might be low left or high high right something like that so we're going to put that to the test and see what we can do so I'm just going to take one shot at the head make sure we're accurate and let's go take a look all right so you can see this bigger hole right here is the wad and the smaller hole is the slug um, and pulled the shot just a hair, but we'll go ahead and follow it up with a, a round of buckshot and see how tight the pattern is and see if it matches up. All right, so now I have that Federal Flight Control Buckshot 9 pellet, uh, double up buck. I'm going to take a shot, same distance. I'm going to shoot at the X-ring this time, but we're going to see if that pattern shoots right in the center of the X-ring. And you can see that the majority of the pellets are actually right on the X-ring, um, but it does favor a little bit low left so that's important to keep in mind that if i'm aiming right here most of my pellets ended up down here about half of them anyways so let's uh let's try some of that boutique stuff i'll go ahead and mark these off and we'll try one of those uh those buckshot those weird defensive ones that i have all right so i went ahead and marked off all the shot holes all nine pellets i'm going to shoot at the x-ring with that uh, multi-defense buckshot and we'll see how the pattern looks uh my hopes aren't particularly high for it but let me know what you guys think uh and see if it lives up to your predictions So a lot more recoil on the multi-defense. Uh, it's not a reduced load like the law enforcement loads are, so a lot more felt recoil on it. Let's take a look at the pattern. Okay, so this is this is an interesting result, but it's about as I expected. So you have our aiming point right here. You have that big 65 caliber ball that landed right here. And then our fresh shot holes are one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you got a really big pattern right there. It doesn't stay nearly as tight, uh, but I'm wondering as we get further back, if this ball will stay on the center line. And that's something I'd like to check out. So let's put a fresh target up and uh, move back to 25 yards. All right, so we walk back to 25 yards. I'm gonna start with the flight control and uh, we'll go down and check the pattern. I switched to a nice big bullseye target to try to catch our, uh, our patterns. Uh, let's see what we can do. All right, so at 25 yards, the pattern's still pretty tight. Uh, if our aiming point is this X, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, and there could be a ninth right here. Um, yeah, and that's eight and nine right there. So I'll go ahead and mark these off and we'll try that uh, ultimate defense. We'll try again with the ultimate defense. I'm really curious to see if that big 65 caliber slug-like ball stays kind of centered up. Let's give it a shot. And let's take a look. All right, so if we remember our, our uh, ultimate defense is like a uh, six pellet um, and it's not looking so good so far. I'm gonna have to peel out. So the, the ball still kind of stayed center. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, um, and I'm not really seeing number six here, so we're already starting to lose pellets at 25 yards, um, and you can see the B-27 in the background, so the initial pattern from the, the flight control would stay within a torso, no problem at 25, uh, and this ultimate defense stuff, you're starting to miss uh, a fairly significant amount of pellets, but this little ball still stays uh, fairly centered. So let's move back uh, maybe to about uh, 35 yards. We'll go 10 yards further and see what we can do. So now we're at 35 yards. We'll start with the flight control. And let's have a look. All right, so here we are. We got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then up here in the corner, eight and nine. So seven out of nine would still be inside of a torso. Uh, and that's at 35 yards. That's pretty good. Now the ultimate defense. All right, so here we are. Um, and unfortunately, that big ball didn't stay on track. It's way over here now. And uh, let's see how many buckshot pellets we can count. So I see one and two off the paper. And really that's kind of all I'm seeing. You have this one, which would have maybe been a miss, but it would have been close. And then a couple pellets that landed. So you had one land in the center. So the ultimate defense stuff really fell apart as soon as you get out of any, any sort of range whatsoever. But let's go ahead and push all the way back to 50 yards and see what the flight control can do. All right, so we're all the way out at 50 yards. And I think most people would consider this out of the range of traditional buckshot. And uh, you know, I have kind of my, my doubts about it too. Uh, but let's see if the shot is still worth taking. Like if, if you had to make this shot, no hostages involved, uh, would the pellets still land? Uh, and, and if it doesn't, I want to see how many shots it takes to get an average of pellets hitting where you want them to. So let's go ahead and try it out. All right, so here we are at the target that we uh, set up at 50 yards and we have one, two, three, and uh, Looks like there's one up here. So there's four on the paper. So, I mean, if this was a full B-27, there'd be another shot. These three are fairly centered um, and they would have hit a torso. They would have had like torso, torso, neck, head, uh, but not the most effective thing in the world. Uh, so we're just under 50% of the pellets. I'm gonna take another shot and see if uh, it prints kind of the same. Let's take a look. So right away, I can tell this shot uh, produced a lot more pellets on target. I can see one, two, three, four, five. This would have been a miss off of a torso, but now there's five. So we're sitting kind of after that two shot average, um, about 50% of our pellets still stay on target with the flight control buckshot. So I'd say that's still effective even at 50 yards. Let's push it. So now that we're all the way out at 75 yards and this is a pretty long shot for buckshot. Um, so I don't know what kind of percentage we're looking like. Uh, I know it looks like the truck is close in the background, but it's actually really far away. It's just the angle of the camera. So no Tacomas will be hurt in the filming of this, uh, of this video. All right. So with everything marked from the last string, we took a shot at 75 yards and I count one, two, three, four, five, six. And I have seven up here. So I think that's a fairly interesting result that now uh, at 75 yards, I'm seeing seven pellets on target. Obviously, if it patterned like this every time, that would be extremely effective. So what I'd like to see is if we uh, put up a brand new target and shoot again at 75, will we get the same result? All right, so we're back at 75 yards with the flight control. Let's see if we can achieve that same result. All right, so with the fresh paper up, I see that we got one pellet here, and then it looks like two up here. 
So not, uh, not so good. All right, so you can see that at the first shot at 75 yards, we had seven pellets on target, which I thought was phenomenal. Uh, and then the second shot, we had just one, and it was fairly centered on the target. Uh, and that uh, begs the question, what to you is effective? What percentage of pellets on target is effective to you? Is just one pellet enough? Uh, or is, you know, do you need 50%? Do you want all of them? You know, so at 75, it's, it's kind of up in the air. So what I want to do is now I'm going to fire three shots of the flight control buckshot and just average it out. Out of the nine pellets, how many hits could we get? Um, and could we say it's reliably effective to hit a target at 75 yards? All right, guys, so we fired three shots of the flight control buckshot at 75 yards, okay? This shot was already here, and so now we have one, two, three, four, five, and these ones were already there. So out of, uh, and then there's some lower, I guess, one and two lower, so six and seven. Um, so that's only seven out of 27. To me, I would not consider that effective. Uh, so 75 yards, would I take the shot with buck if I had to? Sure. Um, are you still getting hits on a torso every time? Uh, I, I guess you are, yeah. So you could perceive these results a couple of different ways. All right, guys, so you saw the, the results at long range, and, uh, you know, 75 is kind of the cap for me personally. I, I wouldn't really want to take those shots at 75 and out with a flight control buckshot. But anything within that, I feel very confident that I'll get the majority of my pellets, at least like 50% on, on the paper. Uh, when you start getting below 50% of the pellets, like in the world that we live in, you're kind of, right, you're responsible for where each one of those goes. Uh, if you're shooting out in an open field, by all means, uh, but if not, you know, you're probably taking on more liability than it's worth. But before we close out, I just want to touch on one more thing where people are saying, oh, if I have a shotgun for home defense, you know, I don't even have to aim because the spread's so good. That might be true if you're shooting birdshot from, you know, 10, 15 yards, you might have a pretty good spread on it. But this is flight control buckshot. And if you're using buckshot and you're in for home defense, which you probably should use an effective load, not birdshot. Um, let's take a look at what it does to the target. You see the two slug holes, one from the wad and one from the actual slug itself in that B27. But now we're at about five yards. I'm gonna go ahead and take a shot and see if you can tell a difference between this pattern right here and a slug. Right, and you can probably see it from there. That the hole in the head is just barely bigger than a slug hole. And that's because all the pellets are so tight um, that they're barely bigger than a slug. So for all you guys out there that say, hey, buckshot, uh, you know, I'll just shoot buckshot down the hallway. It's like, well, you're gonna be punching a lot of tight holes through your drywall. Uh, because it doesn't spread as much at close range, especially with the flight control as you think it does. So keep that in mind uh, when you're selecting your ammunition. So uh, the whole purpose of this video is to like, hey, you need to take your shotgun out and the ammunition that you were going to be shooting and, uh, and see how it performs with your gun. So with this Benelli, I know that my limit's 75 yards with buck. And I know that anything closer than that, I'm going to have a really good hit percentage. And I know that anything within about 15 yards, I'm going to have a really, really tight pattern. Uh, and then, you know, we tried that boutique ammo, that uh, maximum defense or whatever it was, and that stuff was really disappointing. And I think most of those kind of boutique uh, gimmicky loads are, where they kind of advertise that they're going to do something, you know, that's super cool. Um, you know, but all, at the end of the day, it's just putting a, uh, a less efficient amount of projectiles into the into the wad. And when you're shooting different size projectiles out, I mean, it's, it's all over the place. So I think it's better to have just straight like double lot buck or straight slug if you're going to go that route. Uh, but hope this was helpful for you guys. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.